Welcome back. All right, if you're one tuning in for the very first time, this is the big board. Hope you enjoy it. We play all sorts of fun games from Hex and Counter Tactical all the way through to uh, block games and the occasional point to point system, but uh, primarily focused on military history. And today we're going to have a look at uh, TAC Air, which is an Avalon Hill title from back in the uh, 80s. I probably should have looked at the copyright on this. But uh, the idea of this video today will be really just as a quick introduction, uh, have a look at the, the components, talk a little bit about the systems based on what I've read so far. I'm just in the midst of setting this up. I was hoping to play uh, the first turn last night, but decided to watch Spectre, James Bond movie instead with the family. And that was, yeah, you know, that was okay. So let's, uh, let's have a look at this. There are two boards. So there's, this is uh, board, board A, and there's another board of equivalent size. And each, for scale, each hex is, and this is uh, West Germany, East Germany, uh, area each hex is one nautical mile, not one kilometer or one mile, but one nautical mile, and just designed by a uh, either I think a colonel in the air force. So it has, uh, and the focus is obviously on uh, air combat and uh, air to ground combat in particular. So tactical air support is basically what we're looking at here. Although there will be some air to air combat going on. So, uh, set in the 80s, and we'll be focusing in on how Soviets and the NATO forces fight and uh, engage in the, you know, the potential conquest of uh, Western Europe. So the box uh, is very evocative, gets, gets the blood going. I'll have a look at the box and just bring this in here. There's your Avalon Hill box art. That's an A-10 Warthog on the uh, on the cover there, and lots of Soviet T-series tanks in flames, possibly T-72s. I think I'll let someone smarter than me let me know. Uh, you can. We'll show you uh, counters next. You can see the artwork is by today's standards pretty ordinary. They're just black silhouettes with your inf combat information on the fronts. And on the backs of the units, particularly the air units, uh, you don't, you, they're like this for a reason. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second if I, if I get that far on this video. We'll see what happens. So anyway, you've got basically battalions, uh, headquarters uh, elements, supply elements, that's what the trucks are for. And you have uh, your anti-aircraft equipment and or radar units and all sorts of fun stuff like that and infantry and combined arms and yada 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 right uh, the rule book is fairly smartly done let me show you the i've got a print out here so i'll just show you the actual copy there's a bunch of charts there's the other map so the basic game is just four pages of rules one two three four pages of rules Pretty straightforward, and you can jump straight in and play basic scenarios and have some fun and uh, get on with it, right? Which is great. And then if uh, you're so inclined, there are the advanced rules, and that has an additional probably 10 pages of rules when you really break it all down, because there's a number of uh, scenarios and things like that. I think the scenarios kick in. Yeah, there's eight pages of scenarios, so 20 pages of rules. But then if you look at some of the optional rules, they kick in around page 12. So there's another 10 pages. So 14 pages of rules all up. Pretty comprehensive. It's well, relatively well worded. It's done by the dude that wrote the rules for Flat Top, I think. So is it Greenwood? Is that who I want to say it is? Let me see if I can find the credits in here somewhere. And I quite like the way he words his rules. They're, they're pretty, uh, <coughs> pretty straightforward, although some, they are somewhat repetitious, so just to make sure that you don't screw it up. They even have tournament scenarios in here. Let me see. Here we go. 
Rule Craig Taylor. I don't know where I got Greenwood from. Craig Taylor is the credits here, and here's a Gary Morgan was one of the uh, designers, and may, uh, here it is. Major Mark Thibodeau was the Air Force major that helped to uh, develop the game and design the game initially. So let's have a look at the the, the systems in this game and, and see how things kind of hang together. Uh, the game turn sequence uh, revolves around uh, prepping, uh, doing dis disruption removal, uh, looking to see who is uh, you know depleted or fired, and chain and, and uh, flipping units from their uh, movement side to non-movement side, and defense units from their moving side to their firing side. Uh, the air allocation, you do the same thing where this is where you're going to give your air units missions and they can either be basically uh, ground support missions or air missions and those air missions um, can take on a range of top, uh, topics or, or, or tasks I should say. So interesting there, you're going to you're going to do some stuff with your helicopters as well and then you get into the maneuver phase and that's when you'll move the ground units and then you'll have an air phase and in fact you'll have 10 air phases. Uh, those air phases are tracked on these rounds here. This little tack air chart you've got here, the player card that gives you, uh, all, there's all the terrain effects here and the movement rates on different uh, types of terrain. You're going to keep track of your turns and then keep track of the rounds and the number of days if you're playing a multi-day scenario. And then as you r rotate units off the board at the end of the turn, they go into recovery, refuel, rearm, and readiness. And then you'll send them off, uh, depending on how, uh, what type of mission they're going to run, uh, you know, close air support, CAS, CAS, CAS missions, or, or something else. Uh, they, they have wild weasels in this so that we can conduct anti-radar, anti-air ground missions. Lots and lots of cool uh options for the wild weasels but they keep it real nice and they keep it very simple and there's also uh, the concept of standoff missions where from a fairly from a fairly significant range you can use these uh, anti-radar missiles and uh, when you fly a particular type of aircraft and I don't recall the, the model type at the moment but you fly this particular type of aircraft around and uh, all the units, all the anti-air units in its range and the HQs for those units in its range are going to be uh, negatively affected. So that means then you can bring in your wild weasels and actually take out the anti-air uh, HQs or the anti, or the, you know, the air to ground uh, units, sorry, the ground to air units. And, uh, and then you, obviously you could then bring in after that your A-10s to do the actual CAS missions more safely than perhaps you would if you hadn't have gone through this somewhat sophisticated approach to uh, you know the the air ground war ground air war right so it looks very very interesting headquarters and supply make a difference in this game uh, you're going to have headquarters units with a range and all units that are within that range who are, are going to be able to operate normally and all those units that are outside of that range are going to have penalties uh, and those penalties will uh, range from not being able to attack at all to uh, just having uh, uh, detriments to their combat value etc etc and their ability to recover uh, from disruptions. So uh, same with supply. Uh, if you're out of supply but from you know uh, out of range of the supply units you're going to have the same sorts of issues. Nice game charts here. You can add in time and weather tables so you can randomly assign a start date and which will then impact weather, whether it's fog or clear. And that's going to then impact the ability of the abilities of the aircraft. And you can also then get into time of day. You know, is this mission uh, happening first thing in the morning or is it in the evening or, you know, this night activities and stuff like that. A lot of these things, uh, when you look at some of these optional rules, tend to really impact uh, or, or are more focused on it's, it's minor degradations in effectiveness. So whether or not that adds anything to the gameplay or to the narrative, I'm not, I'm not sure until I actually try it. But 
your standard game turn is going to run from early a.m. to to evening, and that's just every turn is going to be like that, and that's just what it is, right? There are nuclear weapons and chemical weapons, and you can do all those sorts of fun things as well. Um, here we go. Here's these radar homing missiles, and the the modifiers that. Uh, uh, can apply there. There are also electronic warfare countermeasures that can be uh, instituted as well and that's going to have impact on uh, ground to air uh, forces and H HQ effectiveness and things like that. It's going to halve the range or whatever the case may be. You've got your combat, uh, combat results tables are fairly straightforward. Everything is uh, built upon the concept of disruptions. So you'll have one disruption will provide you know, some negative effect to the unit, two disruptions will kill it. Well, actually, is it three or more will kill it, I think is what it is. <clears throat> I have to look at my rules summary. And then, uh, and then you can recover those disruptions over time as well. So that's all nifty. Here you go. Here are the, the disruptions here, D1, D2. Uh, both lose one, the attacker loses one, uh, four disruptions, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and so this is all fairly straightforward. Fairly straightforward. It's run off a D6, and we have... Um, Just looking here, yeah, it looks like th more than three is going to kill you because three levels of disruption may not move or attack, and you lose your zone of control. So four, four, uh, four disruptions going to knock you out. Okay, you've got it's based off a of differential in terms of combat uh, and defense factors. Uh, let's see here, you've got a roll for disruption removals. There's a line of sight in this game, which I'm not 100% clear on just yet, but we'll get there. And and you've got what the you know, what the different values on the units are, which I'll just hold that still for a second and let you have a look at it. Okay, so that's the that's the the guts of the of the game and the system. The these are all uh, the games. Uh, the counters are set up by formation. So these hearts, triangles, and uh, different coloured hearts and squares, etc., denote the different uh, formations which we can look up in the uh, OB in the back or uh, reference off the back here. So, or off the, off the counters. So, looks very interesting. I'm going to punch some counters and then the next set of videos that come out will uh, give us a look at the actual gameplay. Not sure how I'm going to present that to you yet. I may, uh, I might just do a walkthrough recaps, or I might do, uh, might do something a little more involved if the uh, if the fancy strikes me and the entire house is not being torn apart as we put new flooring in, uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm actually trying to jump into this game right now because I'm hoping it'll be consumable and uh, easy to uh, easy to play and move as the as we progress through the game, and just in case I need to. Uh, give up this space that I'm hunkered down in. All right, talk to you guys soon and uh, look for another video. Please note that you can see all the stuff on Facebook and Google Plus, your sister's backside, as Vic DiBattito might say, and where else are we posting? Obviously, there's a blog, www.bigboardgaming.com, and you've got the YouTube channel where you're seeing this now, and you may 